Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Benchmade Claymore automatic knife. Wow. The freaking power on this thing. God, the thing kicks like a mule. Uh, I've handled a lot of automatic knives from Protec and, you know, a whole bunch of other companies. Uh, Kershaw, uh, Bolker, right? A bunch of others. Um, and then I've also uh, handled a whole bunch of automatic knives from Benchmade's line. Um, even the famous and kind of dangerous automatic Adamus. This is one of the nastiest, like hardest firing autos that I've felt. There's, it, I don't know if it's... Uh, because the handles are the handle skills are so lightweight, or if it's because there's a heavy torsion bar in there or coil spring in there or something, it's just really, really snappy. And I wanted to make that known before we started the review here. I think this knife is available in some places right now. It depends on when you're watching the video. I will link it right down below for your convenience. Uh, it does help out the channel when you use my links, but that's entirely up to you. You can at least use it to check pricing and things like that if you want to before I get started here. Thanks so much to the gentleman who sent this in. I appreciate that. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and measure this guy. <clears throat> Benchmade Claymore coming in at about eight and a half inches. Blade length is coming in at about 3.6 inches. And the cutting edge is coming in at 3.3, eh, 3, .3, three and a quarter. Three and, a, three, three and a quarter, 3.3. How about some size comparisons? Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 uh, and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, uh, the Claymore and the Rat are very close in overall size. Uh, how about up against the uh, Benchmade Gruptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and uh, its brother for size comparisons, the Benchmade Bugout. I think a lot of people will find that interesting. And last but not least, uh, the Spyderco Para 3 and Spider Co. PM2. So there you go. The Claymore is 100% a full-size knife, or at least how I measure a full-size knife. Let's go ahead and do a comparison of um, handle thickness here, carry profile. So up against the Spider Co. Para 3, you can see that it is definitely thicker. These are contoured though, so it kind of takes away from, it kind of dulls the harshness of that a little bit, right? It's nice that it doesn't have angular scales. Ugh, that's I, It's scary to deploy it with my left hand because my left hand is not, not my dominant hand, right? Um, but uh, yeah, so anyways, um, let's do height. I don't know why I open it. Height and length up against the PM2 and Para 3. There is a part of this knife that's fairly tall right here, right? That part is almost as tall as the maximum height of the PM2, but the PM2 still clears it. So if you've been carrying the PM2 in pair three, right, if you're okay with that, you're probably going to be okay with this. It is pretty long. It's definitely about as long, if not a hair longer than the spider. That's weird. Is that really the case? Yeah, oh my gosh. It's actually a little bit longer than the spider could pair three. Um, that makes sense. It's, it's a little bit longer all the way over, uh, you know, including the blade. Uh, it's definitely longer than the uh, para three. So take that into consideration. Blade stock thickness on this guy. People always get mad at me when I refer to knives as guys. The first time somebody told me that was two years ago. I haven't stopped. <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, let's go ahead and do blade stock thickness here. Uh, 110,000, so not a super duper thick blade. That's kind of, Benchmade doesn't normally do ultra thick blades. So that kind of makes sense. Hardware check, get out my tools. The tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the um, comments section where I talk about my tools uh, right at the top. And it's also in the description. I think the pivot is a T10. Yeah, so we have a T10 pivot. Then we have a whole bunch of T6 screws. One, two, three, four on each side. Oh, nope, I'm sorry. Do we have another one? Yeah, five on this side. One, two, three, four, five back here. Plus the way too many screws, way too many T6 screws. Um, don't like that. Don't like T6 screws, don't like way too many screws. So that's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Use the right tools. Make sure you've got a place to keep the screws so that they don't roll into the ether or oblivion or wherever screws go when you can't find them and you should be okay. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it. I bet this knife weighs 
three and a half ounces. That's my guess. Come on. Whoop. We've got to change the units. Here we go. Ah, I was off. Okay. 3.92 ounces. Okay. Ratios, decent, not perfect. This is going to be too big for some people. It's going to be illegal for some people for more reasons than just the fact that it's an automatic knife or a switchblade. People always confuse about it. That's a switchblade? I thought a switchblade was it. This is a switchblade. Any knife, like an OTF where you slide the switch up and the blade comes flying out the front and retracts, that's a switchblade. Uh, you got an, a knife uh, that's a side opener and you push a button and it opens, that's a switchblade, right? An assisted knife, like the Kershaw Blur, is not a switchblade. It's an assisted knife. It's kind of a silly, you know, the way that we distinguish the difference between those things is kind of silly, right? But that's, if you want to know, like, how the officer is going to look at it, again, I'm not a good source of legal advice. Um, yeah, this is a switchblade. Uh, anyways, um, let's see here. What do we need to do next? I think we've done everything. Let's go ahead and talk about the knife. So there is a safety here. And, uh, okay, you know, it, it works, um, definitely. It also will lock the blade into the open position. I don't know. The The button is, is recessed and it comes up just slightly higher than the frame. I think the best safety for me, I mean, you know, just considering the nature of these knives is to get it to deploy quickly and conveniently. Recess the button a bit more. So you got to be a bit more deliberate and then um, get rid of this safety feature altogether. Then again, I can understand wanting to have the safety, right? Uh, you know, not just for kids, but just stupid adults who pick stuff like this up and go, oh, and just push, right? What happens is, and I know a lot of you, like this has happened, right? Your 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 Uncle Jimbo, right? Or your 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 cousin Jeff, or you know, you just have a buddy who comes over and you have this laying out on the coffee table because it's not a problem in your own home, right? You maybe you forget to put it away. And they just pick it up and fire it and it goes flying across the room because they have no idea how powerful this is going to be. They have no idea, right? So having that safety on might give you one extra second. They might sit here and Hey, uh, hey, your knife doesn't work, right? I mean, then it'll give you a chance to go, hey, why don't you give that back to me, right? Um, or maybe it's you want to have it in your pocket and you don't want to, you don't want it to go off in your pocket, right? I'd say it's pretty unlikely. If you imagine with me, my finger representing the back seam of your pocket, this thing's pushed up against your pocket, clipped to your pants, so the button's up against your leg. Something would have to come, something in your pocket that was shaped like a tiny finger would have to come in between your leg, right, or the inside of your pocket against your leg and the button in order for that to accidentally fire. Not very likely. So there you go. There's arguments for or against the switch or the, the safety mechanism. So do with that information what you will. Ergonomics. Wow, it's pretty comfortable. Actually, this thing's ready to go. Like this is a knife that, you know, whether I'm barehanded or wearing gloves, yeah, you are locked in. Your finger's not coming up on that blade. You're not going to move from this position. You're locked in with the not just the ergonomic lines, but also the jimping here, which isn't that harsh because we're looking at grivery. <clears throat> All right? We're looking at that plastic stuff. And then you're looking at a little bit of grippage right here. A little bit. Not anything too aggressive, but yeah. It is uh, locking you in, and at the same time, it's pretty comfortable at being combined with one of Benchmade, one of the best clips in existence, Benchmade's deep carry, longer deep carry clip. Um, yeah, this is pretty comfortable. Now, when you're choking up or you're using your thumb to brace, you're going to have to be way back here because they decide, much like the AFO, if you guys remember the Benchmade AFO, it kind of has this, um, <laughs> what shape do we want to call this? Let's, let's back away from that. It has this shape, right? Mushroom head. Uh, shape. <laughs> Mushroom cloud shape, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it has that shape. So you're having to brace back here when it's much more natural and much more comfortable to brace up here. But it depends on what you're doing with a knife, right? So ergonomics, pretty good. Nice and contoured. Edges knocked down. I mean, this is uh, injectionable plastic or grivery, right? Very durable. Feels cheap as all heck. Oh my gosh, especially when they hollow it out. Like this, this isn't quite as bad as the bug out. God, I need to get rid of these screws. My flash, the magnet in this flashlight keeps attaching. Um, they have, uh, can we see? Uh, there we go. Yeah, they've hollowed it out. They've milled it out in some places. Um, I would prefer when it when it has to be grivery, just don't mill it out. Like don't, 
don't save us that 0.01 ounces, right? Um, just let it be, let it feel a little bit more solid. This definitely feels better than the standard bug out, but it also, I'm very aware that it is grivery. There are steel liners in there, but they only go down about halfway. They are cartridge liners, and that's why you're seeing this screw right here. It's, it's helping hold in those steel liners. Gives something, uh, gives, uh, you know, the, the washers are then riding on, um, uh, steel and not plastic. Uh, and then it adds reinforcement for the pivot and just for the rest of the knife. Um, I would prefer that this went the route of the other Benchmade autos and be aluminum. I know sometimes Benchmade screws around with G10 and that's okay, but on an automatic knife, I just like the feeling of aluminum. And it's that way because I've grown fond of what ProTech and Microtech have done. It just feels more solid. And I, I believe that aluminum is going to be more durable, but that's really aside from the point. I want it to feel like what I paid for, right? I doubt that aluminum costs that much more than Grivery or G10, right, F uh, from Benchmade's uh, corner. But aluminum just feels better. It feels higher quality, and I appreciate it. It also, I think, sounds better on deployment. This actually does has, have a nice audible thwack, right? It's This is a powerful auto if I'm not displaying it correctly, right? This makes your whole arm move. Uh, every time you deploy it, I can't quite hold it perfectly still. It really is just like a twitchy piranha when it fires, right? There's a knife called a piranha. I shouldn't have used that example. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what the, what is this? Is this Morse code? <laughs> wait, wait, or is it Braille? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Is this Morse code? I just now noticed that. I don't know what, uh, maybe it is. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll put something up on the, um, if I figure out what that is, uh, I'll put it up on the screen. But um, uh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> okay. I like that the button is knurled. I don't know. I don't know that really makes a difference. It just looks nice, right? So I'm sure a lot of you think, oh, he just got a sample of it with serrations. There's probably a straight edge version of it, right? As far as I know, no. They only do a serrated version of this. Why? There needs to be a straight, continuous edge version of this. Uh, you know, I mean, for those of you, like if, if you're looking for an automatic knife, you really throw around and use hard and uh, you, you're going to use it in a wide variety of cutting scenarios, maybe serrations are going to be advantageous for you, right? I don't like them. I don't like sharpening them. I don't like messing with them at all. I want a continuous edge so that I can slice and, can, and process materials like cardboard continuously without getting hung up, right? Depends on your usage habits. There needs to be a version of this with a straight edge, right? What's the steel? Oh no, it's D2, right? Everybody freak out because it's D2. See those three letters right there right before it says D2, CPM? That means this is Crucible's D2. I have said this so many times, but I will continue to shout it from a mountaintop. CPM D2 is not the same D2 that we're getting on the $50 Chinese knives. It is a wildly different monster. In fact, it is play, just, I'm gonna say this straight out. This is the most underrated powder steel that, that we have. CPM D2 is an awesome steel. It is way, way better in terms of edge retention, toughness, right? I think even ease of sharpening because that chemical maker, that powder formation, that cake mix is even, right? So you have even carbide formation in the edge, which should, in theory at least, make it easier uh, to sharpen, or at least you have better edge stability. So it's not gonna be like chipping in some places and rolling in other places as much as regular D2, right? D2 has great edge retention, like for like budget ingot form D2, right? The standard stuff that we see on the, the cheap Chinese knives. Uh, that has decent edge retention when it's heat treated correctly. This stuff, way better. Is CPM D2 uh, good steel to have on a knife of this price? Oh yeah, it doesn't bother me at all and it shouldn't bother you. Again, I repeat, there is a huge difference between CPM D2 and regular D2. Do not shy away from it, even when it's multiple hundreds of dollars. Um, not saying that we put all value into the steel. We don't do that. 
but CPMD2 is fine. It's good stuff. Good to go. Uh, I like whatever um, Benchmade's doing with their coatings here where it kind of almost looks gritty and like it has a texture to it when in fact it really doesn't. It's actually pretty smooth. It just looks good. It looks tough. I don't know if that is a PVD uh, or Cerakote or DLC. I don't know. Uh, looks like this guy's been uh, loved a little bit and it's holding up just fine. So that's great. CPMD2 does still need a coating in my opinion because it's only 12% chromium and I can't remember what percent carbon. It's definitely not a stainless steel. It's close. It's not stainless though. So I think it's good that it's coated. Um, let's go ahead and move on here to the rest of the knife. So aesthetically, uh, it's all right. I mean, it looks very uh, black and tactical, right? Very aggressive and shadowy, right? I think, is this, does Benchmade still do the black class or the tactical class thing? It definitely looks like it, it, it uh, belongs in there. Um, but, you know, it's not too crazy. It's not like those space garbage that I see from um, Kershaw. Uh, I like Kershaw knives. They just go a little overboard with the Transformer, you know, outer space robot thing. Um, so, yeah, this looks okay. Not, not that big of a deal. Um, they go around the screws and make sure and, you know, do the artsy sort of emphasizing the fasteners thing. Um, this does have a place on the show side of the scale for you to mount a pocket clip so that you can deploy it with your left hand, in which case you're going to be using your index finger. So lefties, I'm sure you have figured out a way to do that when you need to. Um, but that's nice that they include that. There is a lanyard hole for lanyardy people. Uh, there's a backspacer. I... Okay. I think honestly, they would have just gotten rid of the backspacer. It's just another piece of plastic and just done like another standoff, but okay, that's fine. Uh, we have a Chicago end. They're still doing that. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, we have the pocket clip, which I already said I, I really like. Benchmade's deep carry clip is awesome. Um, and it does fall on um, like the textured part. I wish it had fallen on the, like, I wish they had changed this design to where the pocket clip fell on the flat, smooth part of the scale so that it slid in and out of the pocket easier. Truthfully though, the way that it is, it's not that bad. It does fight you a little bit. It's, Grivery's still pretty smooth. So, uh, yeah. Lockup. I have tightened and loosened this a couple of times and it's just got a little bit of blade play. That sometimes is the nature with plunge locks. Blade play up, down, left, and right on a plunge lock doesn't bother me nearly as much. Like, left and right blade play is just obnoxious. The knife's still gonna work. Up and down play, blade play on something like a liner lock where you're heavily dependent on lock face and tang face geometry to make sure that it's gonna stay locked out, much bigger concern. On this, the nature of how that thing sinks in behind the tang, eh, it does, it's not, like, you shouldn't be worrying about this disengaging. It's just annoying. Like, I want it to be solid. I've got a ProTech from 2015. Let me get it out here. A lot of you guys have seen it. Um, my ProTech uh, Strider. Now, this is a much more expensive knife. My ProTech Strider is a uh, button-operated plunge lock, and it's completely and totally solid. Well, that's titanium. Well, okay, but I'm feeling uh, not just flex in the material. I'm feeling like spaces between things, right? So even the less expensive versions of these, right, the aluminum SNGs that come in at 220 bucks, about the same as this, uh, or close to it, those, the ones that I've handled don't have blade player. At least can be, it can be adjusted out. So that's kind of annoying with this guy. Um, the uh, closed position, I mean, that's D10 play. It's not the same type of thing. So it feels like it, you would expect. You can feel some clickiness in here. That's not really a big deal. Centering, um, I think it's pretty darn close. Uh, I remember it being centered when I adjusted it and then I adjusted it and it sometimes looks like it might be off a little bit. Like, yeah, see, like this, I can move it and I can get it. Like I can, I can pull it and leave it alone and it's centered, so okay. So, um, <clears throat> Benchmade, Claymore, CPM D2, Grivery. Uh, I'm just, I'm, now I'm gonna say the price and I'm gonna reduce it to materials alone. This is a $200 knife. Um, it's made in the United States. Um, here's the thing that I always say, right? Because no matter what I say, people are going to reduce, like I'm still gonna have people yelling about D2. Those people have aggressively ignored what I've said. They are still under the assumption in their mind that CPM D2 and regular D2 are the same thing and they're made in the same place and they're not. There's nothing we can do about those people because they, they, they just won't listen. Like this doesn't make any difference to them. 
Uh, CPMD2 is much more expensive to create and it's much more expensive to purchase, right? When Benchmade is purchasing steel from Crucible or that, whatever that in-between company is, I, Crucible told me about it one time. I can't remember. Is it Riviera? Um, when that happens, it costs much more for them to acquire CPMD2 than it would be to acquire, you know, some Chinese D2 composition, right? So, um, don't have a problem with steel. I, I don't, me personally, I don't like Grivery because it feels cheap. Again, I doubt that it costs that much more or less than aluminum. I don't, I think it costs less than aluminum. I doubt that it costs that much less than aluminum. I want this thing to be an aluminum. Uh, and I also want the, uh, there to be a version of it that does not have serrations. And I also want the pocket clip to fall on an, a zone that um, has, a, you know, it's smooth. Another thing, because of the way that they've shaped this handle and because of this area right here, and I think that's probably uh, the closed position. Yeah, it's where it's it's on the stop, that little, well, you know what? Hold on. No, that doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever. Really? No way. No, I'm wrong. That I can't be right. There's the edge. It serves no purpose. This, what is this? Why is that there? Bring the edge back. That, that right there, I know you're thinking, well, it contacts, that's where it contacts the close position stop pin. No, it doesn't. It's the stop pin contacts right here. In fact, you can see, I'll zoom up. That line right there is where it's contacting the stop pin, right? So this area right here, that serves no purpose whatsoever. The edge should have been brought back. Um, yeah, I, uh, that's weird. Uh, so that doesn't make any sense to me. And the reason I was going to, I was, I was going to say, well, you're a long ways from the cutting edge, but it's because that's where the stop pin is contacting. No, this whole area could have been edge right there. We could have added another almost a half inch to the edge and you would have been much closer to it. So that doesn't make any sense either. I don't want this knife to cost less. I want it to cost the same and I want it to have aluminum and have some of these um, issues uh, adjusted. Right? That's what I want, right? It's like, it's easy to just fall in line with the crowd to go, we want it to cost less, rah, rah, rah. Like that's, everybody's doing that, right? Less money, more stuff, right? I mean, no, like at some point, it's like, <laughs> I just have to be like, just alter it so that I feel like I'm getting a better value for the $200 that I'm spending on it, right? I don't want drivery and serrations for 200 bucks. I like CPM D2. I'm happy with that, right? I think most of the, a lot of people who would be interested in something in this territory, a lot of people would think like me, right? Enough that there should at least be a choice. Make two versions of this. I heard somewhere that there was an aluminum version of this being shown by Benchmade at a show. I don't know if that is actually true, but I think that this almost evolution of the AFO2 it, it kind of feels like that's what this is. I think that they should do an aluminum version. And I think that they should do um, a version of it with straight edge. I also think they should probably do a version of it in M4 for those people who just simply cannot wrap their heads around the fact that CPM D2 is actually a good steel, right? There's, there's, that's just, they're going to be there, right? So do a, do a version of this. Do an M4 version of it in aluminum. Do an, a version of this in aluminum with the CPM D2, right? Do a version of it without serrations, and I think it would feel a lot better, right? Um, so this particular version, not super pumped about it. Not something I am going to tell people you should rush out and grab it. And, you know, it might not be available anyway. Um, but I think it has potential. It does feel like a AFO2 evolution. So anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. Um, thanks again to the gentleman who loaned this to me. Uh, like I said, this will be linked down below. If you want to use that link, check it out. You can. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on uh, that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.